Do you know what you're doing, chicken? No. Do you know how long it took to get the driver's license? Yes, <laughs> ten times. Good morning, folks. Welcome along to the vlog. So we came in this morning and it uh, seems like we must have had an issue with cooling overnight. So I'd set some of these tanks to chill down and they'd not got there. And I thought originally that fair enough, there must be a blockage in the pipe. So uh, I took the lid off of the cooling uh, box in the corner. I'll turn around and show you this. So there we go, that is the glycol reservoir. In the bottom we have a pond pump. Over there is a temperature sensor wrapped in a stainless steel circle to prevent it touching any of the cooling uh, gubbins there. This used to be set at minus 11 degrees, I've recently changed that. Minus 7 is where we are now. Uh, and of course, yeah, the problem was that while the pump was running, there was nothing coming out this end here. So I had to go and investigate. So first things first, I pressure tested the system. I took the mains from the wall, rigged up a little bit of an adapter here, and then I managed to get that connected onto the outlet or the flow and thankfully most of it came through on the return apart from one tank which was tank three and it's tank three that's been giving us the problem in fact recently i had to change out a psu which is why it doesn't look as neat on the install as perhaps some of the others do um, and because that psu had failed it burnt out a relay or vice versa the relay burnt out the PSU so um, I went ahead and changed that and while I took this tank off the circuit the other week to put that underfloor cooling cable in there I think what I would failed to do was actually open up that valve in there which uh, well you can't really see it very well but there is a valve in this hole here, there. So that's all the problem was. So it took me ages, we've had the whole thing off. I've added bleed valves to the top of all the tanks as well so we can let the air out of the uh, cooling jackets because I thought that might have been an issue, a bit of an airlock issue. Turns out all of that was unnecessary and in the end, it was just that valve so there we go, uh, this is the cooling box by the way, unless, uh, if you've not seen one before, as you can see, all of the info written on the back that you need, all powered by an STC 1000, and that 242 ohms symbol is actually the resistance of the heating cable. So it's set to heat at the minute, which is only for testing purposes, so I'll press and hold the set button until we get to F1, and then we'll pull this tank down to about 15 degrees and as you can hear it activated the motorized valve at the back so that's going to be cooling now this one is cooling this is blue yeah that seems to have finished and then the black is up at 1019 up there so the best bitter we either need to take a sample of this to confirm the tilt's reading or just let it carry on fermenting for a few more days just till it comes down there you go you can hear those valves closing and also I had to turn this off because that was giving me a false feedback for uh, testing the pipe work but I think we've solved everything now and an addition is what's your back Jim? The addition, of course, is that we've now got handy bleed valves at the top of each of these should we indeed need to uh, come up and just disconnect or bleed or drain the tanks, whatever. That's easily doable now, so that can just sit there like that. 
quite happily, no bother. All I need to do is just wrap this insulation back up and we're good to go. <laughs> oh dear. I was out of work and I was working on the building. Right, that's it folks. Uh, that's that stock away. Gemma's just going to write on the chalkboard so Stuart knows what's in there, where it is when he comes to fetch it out for the pub. So now we're just going to nip into town to get a bit of veg for tonight. We're going to make a nice stew for tea. The weather is right for it at least. And then we're going to come back and hopefully get stuck into doing some work with this plum porter. Come on then, smelly bum. Ooh, ooh, ooh it's dark. Right, let's go downstairs, get everything tidied up, and get set for tomorrow's bottling. So, this is what we're going to be doing it on. This is three head bottle filler from. It's not Vigo, it was somewhere else. See if the name's still on here. Oh, it's not. This was from the internet anyway. I can't remember the name of the company. Search 3 head bottle filler anyway, I'm sure it'll come up. Here we have the uh, the capper, capping mechanism there. As well as, Gemma must have moved them, but she's definitely washed them just recently. We have the pumps. Where's the pumps, Gem? Sorry? Where's the pumps for bottle washing? That you cleaned? The bottle washing pumps. I've, I've put in the oh, it's all in the acid tank? Acid, apart from the springs. Wow, what's wrong with the springs? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so we've got bottle trees, we've got bottle washing pumps with these little jet things, squirts the juice from the uh, from the bottle reservoir up in to the bottle so we'll be doing that tomorrow and cleaning a load of bottles which we'll have to fish out of the corner may as well do it now while we've got a few minutes and uh, I'll be doing a little bit of a play there's the bottles in the corner there in that pallet so we'll fetch that out now so yeah we'll be playing around with Uncle Roy's plum essence to try and get the right flavour profile for all of the yummy yummy plum powder so we have the bottles out ready to go and we've moved the grain into the corner along with 
the mini kegs and they're down there ready for tomorrow just one question though how does Bob Marley like his donuts? We jam in. We j <laughs> Could be swamp thing, couldn't it? Oh, so funny. Anyway, this stuff is actually uh, neoprene insulation that we use for the pipes, which uh, was kindly donated by none other than Robbie Williams. That's right, Bob Marley's hairdo. So, all I've left to do now is pop out a, the stainless steel table that we did originally have all of the pilot kits sat on, or at least the fermenters. We're going to stick that in front of the actual SS Brutech pilot kit, and then that'll give us a surface to work on tomorrow, whence we bottle and everything else. Right, so this is the table that we're going to be uh, doing the bottling and stuff on, and there's the top of it. And I noticed when I lifted it up, it's got these M12 uh, inserts on the feet. So what I thought I'd do is order some casters from Tool Station. They were only sort of four or five pound each. And we can put the whole table on wheels then and have it mobile, which is perfect. A mobile canning table or bottling table, spot on. But we haven't got much time before the school run, Jen. So if you want to kind of get Get sorted, chicken. Mm -hmm. We've got to go to Tool Station before we go home. Why before? Because I'm not leaving the house again once I go home. I'm going to be cooking a nice yummy stew and uh, drinking a nice tasty beverage. Do it in the morning? No, I'm going to fetch him tonight. I like to go tonight. So on that note, we are going to be finally bottling beers tomorrow. Hallelujah! But uh, that also means that we're going to have to do a taste testing in the morning to make sure that we get the right kind of concentration in those bottles. Then we'll mark the bottles up and put them in a warm space to carbonate for a week. And then we'll come back in a week's time and we'll do a final thoughts on the plum porter recipe, V1 and V2. And then, if all is well, we'll be doing it on that kit for Christmas. I think we'll have time. Freaking rights. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>